The river is the cradle of human civilization. For thousands of years, people live and propagate by the river. The ancient Chinese civilization originated from the Yellow River and the Yangtze River. There is also a beautiful river named Baihe River that wanders through the mountains and gorges in southwest China. It is also the source once of the largest waterfall in the world, Huangguoshu Waterfall. Among the verdant mountains and rivers lies a village built by stone, and there lived an ancient minority. The moment we step into this stone village, we feel like we've entered a world of stone. The city gate was a huge stone arch city wall built from tidy stone blocks, with streets paved with slate, and house roofs covered with irregular slates instead of tiles. Even the tables, chairs, and pig troughs are all made from stone. In the village, rows upon rows of stone houses are scattered around, which are warm in winter and cool in summer, damp and fireproof and able to withstand the attack of hail, which is common in March and April in the mountainous areas. There are 129 households in the stone village, and 89 households are from the Buyin. Records have it that the stone village is more than 400 years old. At the beginning, it was a military garrison for the border patrolling army of the Ming Dynasty. After the middle of the 18th century, it became a congregation site for the Buyi people. The stone village lies in Zhenning town, center of Guizhou province, which is geographically right above the stratification layer, thus boasting an abundant resource of slate. This made slate the premium building material for the villagers. Some say that the Buyi people are the offspring of the ancient Bayu tribe, which is the main ethnic group in the south of ancient China. Some say that it came from the Yilan Kingdom, a small ancient kingdom in South China. Still some say that they are the offspring of a great hero, Zhuge Liang, the most famous advisor in Chinese history. For it is said that the Buyi people's ancestors once helped Zhuge Liang to defeat the rebel army in southwest China. The Buyi people have many ethnic festivals which are passed down to today, such as the Tribute to the Elders House Festival in February, Water Splashing Festival in March, Cattle King Festival, and more. There's a touching story behind almost all festivals. The Spring Festival begins at posting Spring Festival couplets. 
On the New Year's Eve, each household will invite the senior calligrapher of the village to write a unit of spring festival couplets for his family. Posting spring festival couplets once was the custom of the Han nationality. It is more than 1,000 years old. The Buyi people don't have their own written language. They took up the custom of writing spring festival couplets in Chinese in the middle of last century. The spring festival couplets are written each year and refreshed each year. Once it was posted on the lintel, the whole village is suddenly filled with a festival atmosphere. On the New Year's Eve, everyone in the village will stay up all night. At the early morning, the girls will carry the water barrels on their shoulder with a pole and hurry to the riverside, wishing to be the first one to fetch the water. By Buyi custom, the girl who fetches the first barrel of water in the first day of the new year is the most industrious and able girl in the village. The Buyi society is constituted by small patriarch families. The senior male has the power to control the family economy and decide the family affairs, while the women usually shoulder the responsibility of rearing the children and doing chores. Chores such as fetching water, washing, and cooking are shouldered by the women. The stone village lies against the mountain, with stone stairs leading to the riverside. The women fetch water, wash and chat with each other by the river. They also make a sacrifice to the ancestors there. The Buyi people love water as they see it as the origin of life and the path back to the heavens. At the first day of the new year, the women will light up incense and candles along the riverside, burning yellow paper money as a sacrifice for the relatives who have passed away and wishing for blessings for the whole family. Water fetched from the river will be poured into the water urn in the kitchen. Many families in the stone village even have their water urn made from stone. In the spring festival, the kitchen is a bustling place and women will make rice wine and sticky rice paste there. We people love the sweet rice wine. They will drink festival wine in festivals, wedding wine in wedding ceremonies, guest greeting wine or guest seeing off wine in the reception of the guests. Thus in every spring festival, each family will make several urns of rice wine, which can be both for self-use and guest treatment. Wine making is always done by the elders. First, they make a large stove of boiling water. The water steam is gathered through a long bamboo section and dripped into the urn slowly. While the water steam passes through the bamboo section, it will absorb the fresh bamboo membrane, bamboo sugar, and several vitamins. Thus, the rice wine tastes fresh and cool with the natural sweet smell of the bamboo. The rice wine is better consumed together with the sweet and fragrant sticky rice paste. The Buyi people have cultivated patties in all generations, and their staple food is sticky rice. It is said, no sticky rice, no festival. No sticky rice, no gift. Every autumn after the harvest, the Buyi women will pick out the first class sticky rice and put it aside for later sticky rice paste making. To make the sticky rice paste, the sticky rice should be soaked in water for some time first, and then it will be cooked and the smoking hot rice then put into a wooden trough and pounded with a wooden pestle. The longer it is pounded, the tastier it will be. This work is always taken by the strongest man of the family. After the sticky rice is made, the women will use it to make small round rice pastes, and some will also put things such as white sugar, sweet bean paste, and ham into the paste. Then the paste will be fried with lard and sprinkled with some salt or honey. Sticky rice paste made this way is palatable beyond description.
The remainder of the sticky rice paste from the festivals can be air dried and kept for later consumption. After the water is fetched, rice wine brewed, and sticky rice paste made, the women will go washing their wax printing cloth by the riverside. It's another custom for the Buyi People's Spring Festival. Buyi's wax printing boasts a great reputation and was praised as one of the three most famous dye technologies in civil China. The Buyi girls will learn wax printing at the early age of 12 or 13. First, they will melt the beeswax into wax juice. Using a triangular copper wax knife as a pen and the melted wax for the paint, they draw patterns such as flowers, insects, and fish vividly on the cloth and dye it in the indigo blue dye vat to make it blue or jade green. Then the cloth is cooked in a pot to get rid of the beeswax, where finally it will be washed repeatedly in the river before a unique wax dry cloth is produced. Then 那么都会拉燃。那么过去的时候，这个布呢，它主要是我们讲的，就是自产自销了。那么现在就开始作为这个工艺品那个销到这个呃国外，还有全国许多地方，就是成了我们国家非常那个，就是说呃有特色的这个
hundreds of years, the optimistic and simple Buyi people live in the warm and beautiful valleys where nature has endowed them with rich and sensitive art creativity. They'd invented many ethnic literary recreations, which have been passed down intact. There are many touching sagas behind many dances. There will be many kinds of entertainment in the festivals each year in the Stone Village, and the most boisterous one is the Flower Gala from the first day to the 21st day of the Lunar New Year. The flower dancing is the bridge between the young lads and girls, and many lads and girls meet their better half in this gathering through dancing and singing. The young man will dress up in their unique ethnic attires and rush to the flower gala site from all villages. Girls will gather together just as the lads do. The two groups will sing ballads to each other while everyone will pay close attention to his lover. Their singings are always impromptu and repeated lyrics are forbidden. The singing usually lasts for a whole day. Singing cannot go without dancing. The young people will perform bamboo dancing in the flower gala. The bamboo dancing was originated from folklore. Legend has it that once there were two gods in the heaven. One is the great hero Buja, who is both kind and brave, while the other is the cruel thunder devil. The thunder devil refused to give rain to the world and made a severe drought. This incurred the fury of Buja who tied the Thunder Devil by the hands as the punishment. But the Thunder Devil coaxed a passing by sister and brother into untying him, and he left a calabash as their reward. But after he got loose, he retaliated by giving thunder showers to the world. People were heavily afflicted by the devastating floods. The hero Buja ordered the gods to dredge the channels, but they all backed away. Buja jumped into the floods without any hesitation. He fought the flood with all his might and sacrificed his life to it in the end. The flood retreated, but only the sister and brother who had set the thunder god free survived by hiding in the calabash. They are the very ancestors of the Buyi people. From them came tribes with various surnames. The bamboo dance was also passed down by them. It is said that performing the bamboo dance in festivals can drive away the thunder devil. Miles from the stone village is the famous natural scenic spot, Huashi, literally the river of flowers. We people in Huashi will sing a toasting song and perform wine etiquette dancing in the spring festival. Wine is the salt for the dishes, poems in life, and genius in festivals. In Buyi villages, wine is brewed year-round. 
the fragrance of wine permeates all seasons. Whenever there is a guest, there is wine. Whenever there is wine, there is singing. Along with wine and singing, there is friendship and happiness. As the hosts and guests toast to each other, it's not only the good wine, but also the wine etiquette and wine games that intoxicate the guests. Wine etiquette dancing shows the unique and jocular pictures of Buyi people's lives via the elegant dancing. Wine etiquette dancing shows the Buyi people's hospitality in an artistic way, but the hospitality the guests will receive in reality exceeds that. If one has the chance to be a guest in Buyi people's homes, he will have a deep impression on this. In the upper stream of Huanghuashu Waterfall, there is Shoulder Pole Mountain. Its scenery just looks like a pastoral scroll. Washing brush dancing is an indispensable recreation for the Buyi people living there in the spring festival. Washing brush dancing is also called the harvest dance. Washing brush, dust pan, and willow baskets are the three basic utilities in their daily labor. Washing brush dancing means people using washing brush to collect the grain scattered in the crevices after the harvest and put it into the barn. It shows the frugality of the Buyi people. Near the Huanghuashu waterfall, there are many ethnic villages such as Buyi, Miao, and more. Thus, the area was called Villages of the Fall. In the Huagushao Buyi village, pole beating dance will be performed in the third day of March, eighth day of April, and sixth day of June. It is said that in the past, the Buyi villagers toiled year round, but as their land is limited, they can't get much grain. Even so, part of their harvest will be stolen away by mice. Thus, at the last day of each year, all households will beat the bamboo poles around every corner of the houses to drive away the mice, wishing it could leave them and go eating the grains in the officers' and rich men's homes. As time went on, this activity finally came into a dance, that is the bowl peating dance. When performing the dance, Young men in the village will dance with bamboo poles to perform the acts of driving away the mice. As both an ethnic dance and a body exercise, the pole beating dance is loved by all the Buyi people.
right now. Bui people live in Yongle County of Guiyang, capital city of Guizhou province in southeast China, and they love dragon waving. The blue dragon is covered with golden scales and is 50 meters long. Maneuvered by dragon dancers, the dragon coils, rolls, and doves, performing all of the movements of the dragon in the legend. The custom of performing dragon waving is more than 300 years old. All the dragon waving dancers are well chosen, strong young men. All the Buyi villagers will gather at the site to watch and applaud for the dancers' excellent performance. Timbale and sauna dance is an ancient dance passed down from the Buyi ancestors. Buyi people adore the Timbale and they sacrifice to it each year. In the eve of the Lunar New Year, all the households would gather together to discuss how to hand over the Timbale from the family it was formerly kept to another. When all details are settled, the timbali will be hung up and offered with meat and wine. Then the villagers can beat the timbali to his heart's content. On the 15th day of the first month in the Lunar New Year, all the villagers will gather to hold a large sacrifice to the timbali with a cockhead, pig head, rice wine, and more. It will not be packed away until the end of the first month of the Lunar New Year, which is also the end of the Spring Festival. Timbale and sauna dance is performed by Buyi young men accompanied by the sound of sauna and the beating of timbale. Dancing with all kinds of bamboo wind instruments in hand, the girls dance with elegance and the men with vigor. The dance is their celebration of the festival and their cherished wish for a blessed new year. Embraced by the nature, the Cascading Mountains are the Buyi people's picture scrolls, the ancient tree their umbrella, and the torrential falls their harps. They are the sons of the mountains, daughters of the water. Their life is simple but healthy, just like the torrential Huaguashu waterfall, full of energy and vigor and will never stop running. <laughs> 